7 o'clock, we have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Paul Maris. Yes. Good evening. Well, this is for the uh, North Alley garage, or the old North Alley garage. Yes. And sale? Yeah. Wow. You don't have enough parking for that. So I, I'll, I'll start mm -hmm. off. I'm out of butter. I will not be participating in the decision. Okay. But my feeling is you are limited in this site by what was the pre existing non conforming use, okay. not what you have on East Street. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. have to fit into selling, what was mm -hmm. she selling? Car, two cars a year, a three, three, few cars a year. But we, we can give you more than that. But the well, but, but you're not gonna, you can't crowd this site like no. you, like East Street. Right now, this is crowded this much. Well, see, it's 12. We can go to six too. But I mean, no, I'm not gonna be focusing too much on seven cars. Well, this is, is gonna this be a discussion. Yeah. How many cars yeah. did you have for East Street? How many cars were you? Selling? Are you gonna move out? I of don't sell no cars. Yeah. No, well, how, I mean, for repairs, you were only allowed to have, I think. Eight, ten cars? No. How many? More than fifteen. We we allowed fifteen for yes. that site? Yeah, but those cars go in and out. So. I, I don't think we did site plan approval for that site. We did a waiver of site plan approval because it was not a change of use. Right. The yes. select board permitted the number of cars there based on oh, some formula okay. they pulled out of thin air. Right. Okay. Well, whatever you guys you know, say. Okay. Well, we're not going to decide tonight, but we're, yeah. but. You want to apply? Yeah. We can do that, and you've got the abutter list. Yeah. Okay, you got the abutters. Okay. Yeah. Public hearing. Okay. Um, we can do it. Well, actually, we can do it on the 18th of September, because that's the day that we got uh, Phil Shumway on, on a definitive lot. Well, well, didn't he have the previous licenses that? allotted so many cars for that lot. That's gonna be a record somewhere. And the selectmen they they yeah, gave him a class two license. Remember the owner came in and she showed that a car had been sold there within yes, the past yeah, year. Right. That's the log book. That's the log book. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't have so many. But the selectmen, it's gonna be in their minutes. How many cars were allotted to that lot? Well John, the question was what Jim asked correctly was if was it used or did it lapse because of no, the grandfather clause? No, she clause? proved it didn't because... She proved no, it didn't no, lapse. No, no, what she proved was that the business use didn't lapse. Correct. But... Wasn't it the cars that the, the logbook said that? Yes. Uh, no, I agree. The business use did not lapse, so the man has the right to put the business there. Correct. However, the overall site use has lapsed as far as how many cars were there. No, so now good. we've got to go by the current bylaw. Yeah, that's fine. Okay? Whatever that may be. So, I got auto sales three, 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 three. And that's just going to be the site plan approval. There's no business use in Acapulco because it's not in the Acapulco. Okay. Um, let's see. What are you going to do with the house? 
What are you going to do with the existing house? That we'll just rent it out. Rent it out? Yeah. Isn't there a door back in this back part of the garage? Yeah, there is. And you're using parking right in front of that door? Right here? To you got it for employee parking? Oh, there is, uh, there's a pay here too. On this side. Oh, yeah, but you got in front for employee parking. Yeah, we can park there. You know. But see, here, uh, this uh, over here, you guys decide which way you want to go. But this is, I'm not going to be putting 12 cars over here. Okay. So, what makes sense the drawings are here? You got more than enough. We have more than enough. So take. That application okay. with this set of plans and file for the town clerk. Give her the check. And give her the check. Made out to the town of Hamley. Okay? And your hearing is all set. You put the data on there. Okay. And you're good to go. See you on the 18th. When was the hearing? Uh, 918. <laughs> yeah, same day is going to be that definitive last subdivision, Phil Shumway. Next up is Mr. Coral. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and company. Coral. Yeah. So, sorry about that. We're looking to expand Thank um, you. and do uh, some uh, retail at our current facility. Okay. Uh, so we're partnering up and supporting uh, Ed Picard of Fish Frenzy to do uh, some retail out of our location with adding uh, about 10 more tanks, which doesn't really impact our operations but it does bring in some quality experience and background that we would need to help uh, sell uh, the re on the retail side of things and we add to uh, its operations out of South Hadley as well. So a couple of simple questions. Any mm -hmm. exterior changes? No. Any signage? Um, not really necessary. Maybe some decals in the window, but... Uh if you're going to put any signs in the window, just when you decide what you're going to do, just come back and see us. Okay. Other than that, Okay, so first of all, give me the address of yes. One Mill Valley Road, okay. D. And retail, it's going to be what kind of retail? Fish and coral, saltwater fish and coral, what we were already at. Uh, aquarium supplies. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really the bulk of my business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the supplemental stuff that the coral and fish need. Get the foods and stuff, right? Yeah. Tanks. Yeah. You're going to be selling tanks too? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, basically yeah, fish I supplies. Stock, I don't stock tanks, um, but people order them. Pick them up. Usually I'll put them on my How big are these fish you got? Uh, our fish are relatively You small. don't have no piranhas there or not, do you? Oh, no, no. I, uh, no I was looking for some. Yeah, yeah no fresh water. No, all right. We could try and get barracuda for you. Yeah? yeah. Some baby fry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's nice. what you want to. <laughs> yeah. And what is the name of the business? Pioneer Valley Coral. And no, but what is that? Oh, my name is currently Fish Frenzy. It's been that since, since 2004. Um, oh, where do you work? Where are you out of now? Um, I'm in South Avenue Falls. Um, uh, I started in West Springfield. I didn't want to talk too well. I moved to Indian Orchard. And I moved to Lemba. And uh, finally, South Hadley. The business changed over the years. We're, we're in South, South Hadley Falls. Uh, down near. Uh, where all the churches are, St. Patrick's. Oh, okay. Patrick's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, a little location behind the laundry mat. Okay. Uh, so, all the fish you got, is, what are they, salt water? Everything's salt water. Everything is salt water. No yeah. fresh water. No. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Well, Lily's research works with uh, desalinization. One of her uh, 
patents that she's working on, so it all lines up for us. So, so yeah, yeah, get those filters tested out and everything with our system. And, yeah, be another company coming down the pike with uh, our water filter company. You don't do any kind of different testing with fish or rock breeding or whatever? No. You don't? No, no, we don't do any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No animal testing or anything like Good. that. Okay, you so, mass did with that and they introduced the mud puppy into the river and got away on them. Does that work? Yeah. 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 motion to waive further site plan approval uh, on the basis that the proposed work constitutes no external enlargement of the existing floor area. Uh, to permit fish frenzy, uh, retail saltwater, fish, coral, aquarium supplies. To come back to this thing. Uh, yeah, to return with a sign. When you decide you have sign. Design. Okay. That's the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Well set. Aye. Thank you. It's that simple. Okay. All right. So okay. before you go, would oh. you just ah. fill in there? Name and address. Or just name and address where where to send something to. Well set. Like my You're up. Pioneer Valley Coral. Pioneer Valley Coral. If you're with her, you can come up if you want. Or just sit back there. Sit back there. Sit back there. We met Desiree already, my, our intern, okay. who's been helping us out. And she wanted to come and experience a real planning board meeting. She's a UMass graduate student. Don't be bashful. Come on up here. Come on. Don't, 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 don't embarrass the poor lady. No, that's no embarrassing. Come on up. You've got to learn sometime, right? Exactly. That's right. So, I brought with me today the model regulations for adult use marijuana establishments that Larry developed for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission communities. And I know that you are interested in adopting your own regulations this fall, I think. Yep. Before we get yep. too far down that path, I did an edit okay. um, using your text, but um, where you had said for your definition section, do this. Yeah. I put that into the body of the motion because we're not going to have uh, we're, we're not going to be ready with the definition section for fall town meeting. Right. So, so uh, it's going to have to go in that. So this just, I, I figured that. This just reads better. Um, okay, yeah. It, again, that's the only change, just the, for now, I just took the definitions that had been earlier in the text and yeah. made them as section two of the bylaw, which After appears the purpose on page of, three. So yep. that just makes it, I thought, a little easier to read. Um, second thing I did was I pulled a copy of the East Hampton bylaw, yeah. so we would have something for comparison purposes. Yes, and they work closely with Larry on this. Yes, their plan. so that just gives you a different um, glimpse of you know, what it looks like put together. And third, last but not least, I just made up my own, jotted down a few thoughts about how we can make some progress going through this because it is kind of open-ended. Uh, and there are some factors that we have that, for example, East Hampton doesn't have, sure. such as people who want to grow it in the fields. Right. And um, that's something we're going to have to address. You've had interest already? We've had, uh, I've had calls from people who sure. want to do craft growing. Yeah. Yeah, we've, had a few. we've had a couple that are interested in the grand scale, but for the most part, when we tell them there's a, there's a moratorium until the end of the year, they want to be raising it this year. 
Mm -hmm. And we told them that, you know, that's not likely. The moratorium such and such, and, you know, we'll have a bylaw in the fall. Next year would be the year you should be, 2019 is when you should be planning. Mm -hmm. So your current moratorium goes through the end of this year? No, it goes to the end of November. End of November, right. okay. So our fall meeting is typically in October. So, you know, we're okay with that. Yeah. Um, Did you get comments from KP Law as well? We did not. Because uh, I got some communication you, from you them. You did get it down to them, but uh, Joel Bard was himself tied up in meetings. By the time he got back to the office, there wasn't enough time to put together comments. Okay. Just, okay. We're looking, we're, we're looking for just general comments on the overall file. So do you want to me to go through and read this? How do you... Um, yeah, well, yeah. Let, let's go, because I've got a few comments, so let, let's go by the sections and we can kind of uh, get them, okay? Okay, well we have this general introduction in our model section, I don't know if we need to do that, but there are, you know, some suggestions yeah. from Larry in there. You yeah. want to go through those? Start. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the very beginning just talks about, you know, the regulations, you know, the purpose from them and who worked on this model. Um, and then in the general comments, uh, Larry noted that for clarification, the terms recreational, retail, among others, have been used um, to identify the use of non medical marijuana, but because in the regulation, the state um, legislation, it calls it adult use marijuana, that's what um, let, let, all these referring let, to let, here. Let's back up a bit here. Okay. What, you've got the introduction, which is the model Bylaw. Yep. And then there's another section called Model Marijuana. Bu That's the actual or bylaw itself. This is the actual bylaw. Yes. That's what I, I don't care okay. about. I don't care about okay. the 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 general why we're here. Okay. I want the actual bylaw. Over the actual bylaw because that's. Okay. Well, maybe we should go through what Bill put together then because it's the same thing as I understand it, but just moved around the definition. Right. So okay, maybe that's, right. that's the best right. thing. Okay. Okay, so in, in the first um, paragraph talks about that same thing that I just mentioned, about uh, using the term adult use. Yeah, so, so yeah, I basically literally just cut and pasted a few things from here. So uh, the really, uh, what's my page three is uh, the same. My page three picks up here, model adult use marijuana bylaw ordinance. Okay. Uh, well, then you've got permitted districts and everything else. Okay. I, I bypassed that too. Um, I bypassed the definition section. <clears throat> I incorporated that. So, okay. There, page seven is. If you go ahead and talk about just the pure bylaw. Well, well, I want to talk about, I mean, where do you want to pick up from their, from their draft? I don't know, because I was expecting to see a bylaw, and this is it. Instead, there's so many different sections, I don't know which is the bylaw and what's okay. not the bylaw. Well, why don't I help clarify? Why don't we forget bills okay. and go right to yours, okay. because I got a feeling that both is confusing. Okay. So, starting at um, page one of our bylaw, right? Which is? That's it. You had it. Page one. Uh, the bylaw itself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, the first paragraph, again, is the same paragraph that establishes the different terms. Okay. And that we are going to use adult use marijuana in this, okay. throughout this regulation, throughout this bylaw. Because that's what the state 
Um, and then, let's mm -hmm. see, these right here. Oh, right, and then it talks about medical marijuana, which you already have a bylaw in place, right? So we don't have to worry about that. I think you should put adult use in uh, quotes, because it's, it's not only adults that are using marijuana, come on, it's, it's teenagers. And so you call it adult use, and it tries to give it some type of... Uh, but you know, it's only going to be allowed to be sold to adults. Yeah. And that's what this is about that's selling what, it. This isn't saying this isn't saying adult sales. This is a, it says adult use, which is a little different. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's what does the state call it? Adult use marijuana. And that's what we that's call why it. we put it. It's a lie. Well, it doesn't really matter. I understand. You got to go by this. I just want to point out what's really going on with the bylaws. Uh, however, we can't. I know, but I think, gotcha, I, gotcha. No. I, think, I think we're splitting hairs on that. I got you. You know, no. I don't disagree with you. Sure, I understand. We've got to go by the, the <laughs> be consistent with the state. Okay, and then it, um, there's a paragraph about the moratorium, and you already have one in place, yep. uh, as you said, so you just need to repeal it at, when you adopt these regulations. Just a note about that. Then the next section is to be inserted into your general bylaws, not the zoning. I believe the town has already accepted a general buy a, a, something to. They've ex, they've Im, they've accepted something to impose a three percent or whatever the tax is. Oh, they have. They I, have I was looking around online today and I didn't oh. see that. I, I, I they mean, had some regulations that the board of health is going to. No, no, no. Impose. We voted a town meeting to impose a tax. I don't know what it, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was a bylaw or whatever. Can you someone get me that information or? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the online bylaw only updates once a year. Yeah. Uh, um, I see. So. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll get from David Nixon. The. Uh, okay. What was adopted? That was a bylaw, right? That's Should I, I reach out to him or will you have it sent? I have. I'll, 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 well, that would be great. Want, maybe it might be easier for you to talk to him okay. and write to him as opposed to talking to him. I haven't met him yet. Um, I can certainly, I can find him at the town hall. Yes, he's, he yes. sits at the very end as you walk in the front door all the way to the well, back. Well, I'd probably left. call him. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So is he there though full time, do you know? Yes, yes okay. full time. Okay. Monday through Friday. Excellent. All right. So I am going to see what they already adopted. Yeah, we've, adop we've adopted a tax. We have not adopted limitation on the on the number of establishments. Okay. So this was about the tax. So um, we can skip that. Now, yes. is is the limitation on the on the number of establishments a general bylaw or a zoning bylaw? So the way that Larry has it set up, I think. There will be something about it in the zoning ordinance, but he felt that this should be, that um, it should be referred to in the general bylaw as well. Okay. So that is the number, um, not to exceed 20% of the uh, existing um, licenses for alcohol with beverages. Okay, do you know why he made that recommendation? To put it in the general bylaw? Yeah. I can look into that. Do alcoholic beverages include places that can just the, sell beer and wine? So, well, I asked the town administrator said that we have seven licenses that are that are affected. Okay, and we only have two full package stores that I can think of. So right. it must be, yes, it does include beer and wine. Okay. Any off premises, any off premise sales, right? Mm -hmm. You want to call Nixon on his number? Oh, sure. 320 yeah. 6695 So rather than set the number, it can, it can be a float. Uh, if we do get another liquor establishment. So, yeah. It, it, Exactly, but there seems it seems like we're starting off at a um, with with confusion because they're talking about uh, they want to limit it to the number uh, to two two units and I 
got the impression that David was telling them that two units was what 20% of the 20% of seven. 20% uh, of seven, but it, in fact, it is much more than 20. Was it 20% of seven? He, he said he said they were they wanted to go for they wanted to go for two licenses at the at the outset. And who's that? The board of selectmen. Because okay. I asked them how many do they want? How many licenses do they want to re to permit? And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. To the planning board, um, thank you for working on zoning bylaws for adult use marijuana in the town of Hadley. After a meeting of August 1, 2018, the select board requested that the planning board consider limiting the number of adult use marijuana retail licenses to a maximum of two, as provided by law. The select board understands that such a restriction would require both a town meeting vote and a ballot vote. Thank you for your attention. Sincerely, David Nixon. And when he, he called me on this and I says, no. I said, how many liquor licenses do we have? He said, seven. Mm -hmm. I said, if you go for less than 20%, you need those votes. I says, two is far more than 20% of seven. And 20% 20, 20, 20, 20 of 10 would be two. Right, so what's 20% of seven though? It's, it's 0.7. It's less than one, yeah. 20% of seven is 1.4. 1.4? 1.4. And they're saying they want to round go for, They want to go for two. So you Is round up. Is that because up. they're rounding up? Well. That's you, the recommendation. You round up, but do you round up to the nearest, do you round to the nearest whole number? Yes. Okay. That's so my you do. understanding. Yes. That, that is the way you do it. So one, so 20, so 20. Now is it 20% is the magic number? For being okay, or 21% is the magic number for being okay. It's a little bit unclear the way this but is. But shall worked. not exceed 20%. Okay, so if you're more than 20, for 20% or greater, then you are not within the. No. My question is is 20% the magic number? to require a town meeting vote or to be okay from a town meeting vote. It's not clear the way this is written. Mm. I, th I think 20% is okay. That's yeah, what we I, 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 told, I, I told David to go with, tw we may go with 21% just to be okay. 21% is 1.44. Okay, so mm -hmm. no matter what they are, I mean, you know, they only have seven licenses, so unless we start getting a bunch of licenses, Right. More liquor licenses right. were okay for quite a while. Isn't that based on population? ABCC will yeah, allow but you, you, you can allow Sony for population. You can also override. We voted two years ago to override and allow some extra licenses. We asked we to, to ask the legislature t for a special act to allow more on-premises licenses. Oh, more on-premise. Okay. Are they applying some value to this license or are they just going to give them away? I mean, this is a significant value that the town's giving away. They should have some type of auction. Again, I don't know. This, 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 yeah. this, this will that's be something right. for the selectmen. Yeah, I hope that they have the control over it that they do I don't know how the legislature was written, but I hope it's not owned like a liquor, like the old style liquor license. If you have a liquor license and I want to buy it, it didn't cost me a fortune to buy your liquor license if you decide to sell it to me, as opposed to the new, this, this deal with the legislature. Mm -hmm. to, there's no, you don't own the liquor license. The selectmen, essentially, a town owns the liquor <laughs> license. We let you use it. You decide to go out of business, we take your license back and we can sell it to somebody else. My understanding with this is that it does not go to another owner. It goes back a to the new owner would have to start the process. Reapply to the town and it would take the first one yes. back. Okay, yes. that's much better. Okay. Uh, I would think that the town would want to make sure that the people that are applying or the businesses that are applying are suitable. Sure. Well, that, that's and, then, all. and then allow them to participate in an auction so the town gets the top dollar for its license because I'm guessing it could be worth upwards to a million dollars. I don't think they're for sale like that. I don't think they, I, again, you have to read the Bible. Aren't they limited to, for the amount that they can charge? Just like liquor license. The state 
allows you a maximum you can charge. Yes. They wouldn't no leave a free for all. So you're going to give one individual a, a monopoly on selling marijuana? No, yeah. but there would it would be a reasonable cost, not well, million dollars. Yeah. I'm not sure. Again, that's, again, that, that's, that, that's, that's the board of selectmen yeah. issue, yeah. not, mm -hmm. not the planning. Right. 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 Okay. Is, is there really any uh, any advantage to going to the 20% rule, or is there a, a advantage for clarity to say maximum of two? So the feeling on that has been... Well, I mean, just us talking about numbers. Here's the mathematician saying one so point eight four four. But then if it changes, if the well, alcohol license number it, changes... There you go. Then you're going to have to change... Your, your bylaw. This Our bylaw, bylaw as well. Yeah. And so we're going to have to go back to town meeting to change the right. bylaw. And if we can't get a two-thirds vote to change the bylaw, then we're out of compliance with the state right. regulations. So if you keep What's it as a percentage... 20%. 20%. They don't indicate that you can pick a number, like two. No. No, they say it's really good. Okay. They say if you're below 20%, you are, you have triggered the obligation to have a town meeting vote and a ballot vote. Thank you. So in other words, Wellesley can't uh, have a marijuana uh, store because it's a dry county? No, 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 no. If you wouldn't... What if you're a dry, dry, this, dry this, county? This, this is way beyond what we're supposed to be discussing okay. here. Okay. But when the marijuana law was a, a, a voted on, not passed, but voted on last year, yeah. if your town did not approve the marijuana establishment vote right. by a majority, right. then all you need is a board of selectmen or city mayor right. to say no marijuana establishments in town. Okay. If you were one of the multiple towns that approved marijuana, then to put a total ban on marijuana, you need both a, more, a town meeting vote or city council vote and a ballot vote um, to both say no mm -hmm. by a majority. And we already had that vote. We've already had the vote and a town overwhelmingly approved marijuana. So right. going back and trying to say none is a, obviously most people <coughs> think it's a waste right of time. Vote, you know, you know. So that's what the town has voted. That's right. what we're going to go with. So back to this. All right. So okay. I'll check on um, why that recommendation is in, for the general bylaws and get back to you on that. Okay. Um, also for the general bylaws was this um, recommendation for a prohibition on public consumption. Okay. I think I'd like to see the advice of the police chief on that. And, okay. I mean, that's... I, I don't think I don't see any zoning issue in there. Right. Um, yeah. This that, that that should be general. That can't be. Obviously, that one can't be a zoning by law. Well, there must be some from state law on what you can consume legally of it. Well, that's what this it, is modeled on. Would you carry in the state? Uh, you know. Regulations. So, um, do you want? Are you going? Will you send this to the police, or did you? I, I will ask the chief. On okay. That one. So the question is that you're asking: Does it belong in the oh, zoning body? No, 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 uh, no. It definitely belongs in a general. But what is his opinion on the word? Right. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, okay. it's probably something you want to have, but it would yeah. be good to get advice from someone like right. that, absolutely. I got you. Yeah, there's definitely not zoning. Yep. <laughs> okay, now we're getting down to zoning. And the first section is the definition section that uh, Bill moved. And we'll just put that at the beginning of the marijuana bylaw. Right. 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 Exactly. exactly. So which. So right. if you want to go through it at all? We'll be, I, I didn't have any issue with with any of the definitions. With the definitions. Okay. I mean, it seems to. I mean, I don't. That's my. Anyone me. else have any questions on any of the? We got a farm. We got a farmer in the audience that might be curious about cannabis cultivation. Well, uh, no. <clears throat> maybe he. Maybe his questions will be answered okay, as we continue good. talking good. about good. this, um, because that does come down to um, one of the things that is a um, yeah it comes right down to location and that's one of the 
the questions I raised in my little notes here, right. the, the single sheet about uh, where are we going to it, in permitted district, but we were right. Okay. So okay. the next okay. after okay. definitions is okay. permitted districts. Okay. Permit, permitted districts. What? Um, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yep. Wait before you do anything yep. else. Mm -hmm. We have no rural district. We have no rural district. We do not have a rural district. We have a residential district. And that's it. No, we have agricultural. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Resid rural is residential. Okay. What page you in? Um, right, so this was six. just from the model. I understand, that's okay. Yep. Residential, we have ag residential. Okay. Commercial, we have three different commercial districts. We have a business, a limited business, and a local business. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have to take this down, you have it already. Yep. It's on the table of uses that you did. We also yep. have the uh, uh, recharge area too. Those are overlay oh, that's districts. Overlay district. That's overlay districts. Yeah. And then we do have an industrial district. Okay. Okay. So I just want to make sure that we're talking the same thing when we go through mm -hmm. this. Okay. Yep, that's good. And um, let's see, craft marijuana. I believe now we can talk about the districts. Right. Obviously. A residential district is, is exactly that, very small, and we probably don't want to allow um, craft, we don't, probably don't want to allow growing in a residential district because it's pretty much just houses, right, Joe? And it's pretty small. I think anybody, though, in the, in the state law can grow a certain number of plants, yeah, right? Yeah, right. we're not, that, that's right. not, that's not, that's yeah. a craft is more of a person sure. that grows it for, for resale. Yeah. Yes. On a smaller scale than yes. a bigger scale. Yep. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's for anybody who wants to grow up for their own use is permitted in all districts. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's by state statute. Yeah, the law allows yes. you to. Okay. So, craft marijuana cooperative. Do we want that in the ag residential district? Okay. So ag residential is about eighty percent of the town. And okay. it covers areas where houses are on less than half acre lots, and it covers areas where houses are on 10 acre lots, mm -hmm. and that's where the farms are too. Mm -hmm. So um, that is the, the big question. You know, the if we're going to cultivate it all, we're going to cultivate in the agricultural residential district. Right. Or in the other districts as well, although they're less fertile. So that that is a threshold question uh, we have to work out where where are we going to do craft and cultivation. I'm not. How is a craft defined? That's so not if we go back to the definition, it is, it let's is, it see. Is defined. It says that. Uh, craft Marijuana Cooperative is a marijuana cultivator comprised of residents of the Commonwealth and organized as a limited liability company, limited liability partnership, or cooperative corporation under the laws of the com Commonwealth. A cooperative is licensed to cultivate, obtain, manufacture, process, package, and brand cannabis for marijuana products to transport to marijuana marijuana to marijuana establishments but not to consumers so then who tests the tests the marijuana be, from the cooperative fields to the to the uh, marijuana establishments I, I thought they had some quality controls here uh, yes there are I don't know exactly how that process works but um, there are requirements for that and that is probably done through the licensing, those requirements for testing. Okay, so okay. even a craft marijuana, craft marijuana product still has to be tested? I believe so. Okay. I will double check. That's important. Well, isn't anything that you sell have to be tested That's to my the public? Yes. Right, to the public. Yep. When it goes yep. to the okay. public. I know how they test the current. Smoke it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Okay, so, you know. Um, so, so I would think that in the ag res and the limited local business, we would want a craft marijuana cooperative by special permit and site plan approval. And ag res, if you decide to do that, if you want to allow it, um, people to be able to grow it in the fields, that's how one way to do that. Now, if you see, there's a note here, and it says um, you, need, you should determine the nature and extent of these operations and consider an initial size threshold, um, such as tier five, which is 40,000 square feet of flowering cap canopy, and perhaps restricting outside cultivation and permitting in greenhouses. So that, you know, it would be one way to control it. The concern <coughs> is that um, the security that would be required around outside fields. So really would this be in the bylaw or would it be in an addendum <coughs> uh, rules and regulations? So, so I guess I'm not sure why as the zoning bylaw has to worry about security. Yep. I mean, that is governed by the state regulations. We just say where. Or where not. Well, and yeah, but as part of site plan approval, shouldn't it be spelled out? You so, so, so. want to ensure that right. certain measures are in yeah. place. So, so, site plan why? approval. You want to be sure that there's security. So why? You, not from, 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 from a zoning perspective, why? Well, well, no, not as, as, as you aptly point out many times, you say uh, people say, well, "What do we problems. need for site plan approval?" And you will say. Uh, it's if that you just follow the, so anybody can go there the, it. the zoning regulations, it will spell exactly. out everything in detail. Right. So, but I think we can put it somewhere in, in this that compliance with state regulations is required because what I want to avoid is a situation where we're setting up a bylaw that has requirements that conform to state regulations as they exist now but then has to be amended by a two-thirds vote of town meeting if the state agency unilaterally changes its regulations. It follows it, right? Yeah, I, I'm saying. yeah I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to set up our own set of rules no. based on today's state regs that are going to put us, box us into a corner when the state agency changes its regs. So we just simple. Must I'm not sure. State regs. Do the state, the state reg addresses security. I it? I have to look at that. I um, thought it does. It's in the Cannabis Control Commission. Okay. So, but, well, in in you know many places, your site plan requirements and special permit requirements are in addition to what is uh, required by right. the state. Right. In addition well, to. However, if they comply with the state requirements of safety and security and somebody steals the farmer's crop, that's not a zoning concern. Just like if somebody breaks into a package store and robs it blind, it's not a zoning concern. That's the only but zoning is about, supposed to be about protecting the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Right. An argument could be made that by securing those fields, you're protecting the safety of the community. What if the state has a spec and they are given a permit by us, by special permit, but they have to adhere to any and all state regulations? Well, we would certainly have that. And if something has a requirement, anyway, goes just, in there, it's on the owner. It's not on who else did they get their left there. I, I thought there was something in there about safety yep. and security. I'm it, sure there is. I know there is on the bigger establishments. Mm -hmm. On craft, I don't. I mean, right. I, I, I'm going to check. By no that. means, I'm an expert guru mm -hmm. on the state guide. Because that. Yeah. But Jim, your Bill's point uh, is analogous to the point that you were pointing out during the aquifer protection district. Very small generator. Uh, remember, you said we don't want to change it all the time. Let's just look at the state regulations. What's the VSQ? Very small. Well, that's true. Want to be generated. Yes. So in that way, we. I, I hear you, Bill, and I think you're correct. Yeah. So there, there's something in here that I'm not. 
let's go back to the definitions for a moment. You know, we talk about cannabis cultivation. Um, do we actually have anything, and then we talked about craft marijuana cooperative. Uh, but is there anything in here about basically, okay, I guess licensee, a person or entity licensed by the commission to operate um, marijuana, marijuana establishment. But then that is, is that different than a marijuana cultivator? Is what different than? The licensee. Licensee is a person or entity licensed by the commission to operate a marijuana establishment. Marijuana cultivator is an entity licensed to cultivate, process, and package marijuana and to transfer marijuana to other establishments and not to consumers. Um, so a farmer doesn't have the right to grow it. He still has to get a license to grow it? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. What, what if he wants to grow it but doesn't want to sell it for use? but wants to uh, have an agreement with somebody from the University of Massachusetts to just do experiments on the ingredients of marijuana. Uh, Where does that fall? I think there are, there's a marijuana research facility uh -huh. category. category. Right. I okay. think, believe it would be in there. There's also in, oh, no, that was a test. Yeah, there is marijuana research facility. Yep. Okay. Yep. That was where that was, so I would think that's where it would come under. So yeah. yes. could a farmer grow marijuana to be used so, solely by a research facility. That's going to be to decide if we so. want to, when we get to that section. Okay. I'll just throw that out. Okay. So yeah. we can all, under the definition bill of craft marijuana and marijuana cultivator, you could just put in there on the last line um, a craft marijuana, not, but not the consumer, craft marijuana is a type of marijuana cultivator that shall comply, licensed, licensed to comply with 935 CMR 500, 5, well, 5500.000, right? Yes, although I think that, uh, Yep. Uh, we have, you know, there is a requirement for the license later on in here for all, any of the cultures. Okay, yeah, I don't want to get too bogged yeah, down. So yeah, so I'm not, okay, I'm not really thinking that but, but I would the definition. Both the craft marijuana cultivator and the regular marijuana cultivator, I would think both ag res and limited business site plan, special permit site plan approval for both. Limited business as well? Why are you putting it in the limited business? Right. Because there's a lot of farmland and limited business that's in APR. Uh, so it can't, uh, that is, that's the, the state's program? Yes. Can you raise marijuana on APR land? No. I, no. Why not? Because that's what the, the, the ruling is. DAR has. considers it a violation of the terms right. of the agreement because DAR has taken federal money. Oh, is that, so there is federal money involved? Yes. yes. Okay, I wasn't sure. I was worried about that. Yeah, DAR take, Department of Agricultural Resources does take federal funds. They apply them indiscriminately. You know, they, they just pour <coughs> all the federal money they get into the same okay. pot. So everybody who's getting an APR has a piece of federal money in there and okay. the Office of Legal Counsel at Department of Ag Resources says it is their position that growing marijuana on APR property is contrary to the under representations upon which okay. they accept. So there's very little, that'll leave very little land under limited and local, or no, little, it'll be little, it'll greatly restrict how much land in limited and local business can be used for marijuana cultivation. Okay, but you want to have it in both of them? Well, I'm proposing that. What does the board feel? I think you should yeah, allow it. Well, it's usually a pyramid, the fact that 
said certain things are allowed in residential, then you build the pyramid. Right. I, I yeah. don't see a problem by allowing it in limited business and local business and ag res and business. Yeah, that's correct. Because if you're having if, if it's APR, list. you can't grow it. Yeah. And if it isn't APR, you can grow it if you meet the license requirements. Yeah. yeah. You know, so what? To say that you couldn't grow it in local or limited, I mean, a lot of that land is not in the business zone. So if this board decides they don't want a particular marijuana growing at a particular site, they ha they can get it by right? No. What do you mean? Well, say, uh, say I wanted to grow in, in a business zone. Okay. All right. And I came in front of the board. It's, it's allowed by the bylaw. But right. the planning board said no. Special permit. It's, it's allowed by special permit. If you meet, but do I have the just the right to do because by right? No. No. What is the definition of that versus? Well, because we're saying you're a special permit. Special permit and only. Site the plan spe approval special is permit covers all that. Yes. So yes. it's totally discretion on the planet. Well, it's not totally discretionary. Right. You mm -hmm. can't abuse your discretion. I, we can't say no because we don't like you. Right. Well, I'm asking that question. Well, yeah, you, no, we can't. If you meet the requirements of the state statute and the town bylaws and the zoning bylaws, then there would be no good reason to deny you. Mm -hmm. But the regulations under the state are pretty severe. In other words, John, we can regulate, but we cannot prohibit. So this gets us right back to that question we, we never really resolved about what is adequate screening for a uh, uh, a solar plant. You know, some some areas you do have some discretion to take take a word. You you lead one way with it, and others lean another way. That's not an abuse of discretion. Exactly, because you're adequate and my adequate when it comes to that are totally black and white. Correct. Right. I look at those yeah. things and just they make I, me I, sick. I right. believe the safety and security thing is a whole different category, and I believe the state kind of defines security. I will double check. We need to double check. That. That. I'm sure they do, but you know, many towns will be adopting their own uh, requirements under their site right. plan. Review process, but if you're comfortable with that, how tall can a marijuana plant grow before it's harvest, harvested? Ten feet? Eight feet? Uh, eight feet? Don't I think it's pretty tall. No, they're, they're, they're pretty tall. I they're, think it's they're, eight, they're, eight or nine feet. I'm gonna say that I want I want to say they're about eight eight feet plus. It's kind of hard, of it it's kind of hard to screen that. How, how well it's how well it's fed? Yeah. Well, and that's why many communities are just allowing it inside. Yeah. Uh huh. Most. Well, like the every single fire, and huh? every single commercial grower that grows it grows it inside for two reasons. One so they can grow it year round, and the other right. one is for security. Sure. Right. That yeah. is what East Hampton was strongly encouraging use of existing structures uh, because they have such an inventory of yeah. all your old mills and things like all that. All your yeah. doing the same thing with a bunch of old yes. mills along yes. well, all over the place. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Apart from a future mall or two that may not make it, right. we don't have a there lot of indoor space. Uh, we Use don't have large existing buildings that are vacant. Right. Don't give the malls any idea. They'll throw all their tenants out and start doing pot. Greenhouses. Right. That is. Montgomery Road. Trust me. Okay. So okay. The, the laws so. of economics do not fail with this either. And if okay. there's oversupply, it's going to happen. Everybody yeah. wants to grow it, and the supplies and the price has gone down. Medical Trust marijuana me. product manufacturer, I agree. Only allowed in the industrial district. Okay. Anybody disagree with that one? To the manufacture, to change it from leaves into whatever you're going to change it into, edible, inhalable. So, or in other words, what you're saying here, they can grow it on the outside in an industrial zone. They can grow it outside if they can meet the security, but to actually change it from a plant into a usable product for the consumer, can only, that's manufacturing. That can only be done in an industrial zone. If you put in a brownie, is that manufacturing? Depends, bake, how you bake bake it. depends yeah, what you do. That's a now. What's manufacturing? That's a commercial bakery yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So uh, you should 
um, realize too that marijuana cultivator does include an entity to license license to cultivate the process and package. <coughs> so um, and to transfer to uh, establishment non consumers. Cultivate process and package marijuana. What, what process and package marijuana? Yes, yes sir. Um, on your craft cooperative, they will be manufacturing potentially as well. So they would be on farms. You said the craft manufacturer will be? I think you're allowed to, to process. How I understand. And what Joe does at this place with vegetables is manufacturing. Oh. Craft marijuana manufacturer yeah, can process and right, package yeah. and mm -hmm. as So all that. It's under the definition of cultivation. Any of that. Correct. It's not yeah. building a factory. Right. Factory or right. So yeah. it's something simple. Oh, although the issue is that on, on a agricultural packaging is exempt. From it's zoning. more than packaging you could do all the but, but, No, but what Joe is doing is, is under the right. agricultural exemption right. to the right. zoning yes. bylaws, whereas marijuana packaging mm -hmm. is specifically excluded from agricultural, yeah. the agricultural exactly. definition. If, now, if a craft menu, if a craft cooperative, a craft manufacturer is limited yeah. to 40,000 square feet, yeah. is it? Um, well, that was what <coughs> that's what we have suggested here. If a craft manual, if a craft marijuana cooperative or a but craft marijuana cooperative you. is limited to forty thousand square feet, the economy of scale for them to process, package, and manufacture it is hardly going to be mm -hmm. a profitable adventure. Um, for them to do it on such a small scale, it would be my guess. Whereas a large marijuana cooperative cultivator that's growing acres of it would be a different story. <coughs> so, what's that? I didn't hear what you said. They cannot grow acres. It's only a hundred thousand square feet. Yeah. What should come forward? Well, you're you're speak, you're too, if you're going to be speaking to us, please sit up here. Yeah. Okay. I'm Stephen Berman from the University of Massachusetts. Okay. What, what, which department? Uh, Stockbridge School of Agriculture. Okay. And we're doing a cultivation in the town of Whiteley and mm -hmm. want to do the same with John and Hadley. Okay. Now. So I don't want to monopolize anything. I no, just, we, 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 and, and that's fine. We're looking for input. You know, this yeah. is something that this, we're not going to get settled tonight. But we want to no, get no, moving on this. We want to put it to town meeting. Yeah. Now, why are you saying 100,000 square feet? That is the restriction that the Cannabis Control Commission says for any license or any licensee. Any licensee? Yes. So the craft cooperative, which is several different people, could okay. be several different farmers, is still capped at 100,000 square feet. In total? In total. Okay. The biggest Colorado funded place still is only limited to 100,000 square feet of flowering canopy. What about marijuana cultivator? 100,000 square feet. So a craft is 100,000? Every. But you can make it different. We can make it different. I would recommend a craft marijuana be 40,000 square That's feet. That's what was suggested here. Because that takes care of the economy of scale. Right. 100,000 is a different story. That would be the marijuana cultivator, mm -hmm. okay? So then we need to we need to look at now on the marijuana cultivator, can we limit them to just growing and not processing? Um let's see. Well, the official definition includes processing. I understand that. Yeah. The question is can you can we make our own definition of a marijuana? Cultivator. This is what come, came out from the Cannabis Control Commission, which may be useful for you, for towns and use. What? Uh, you just handed that. It just came out. 
I probably don't. When did that come up? What, yeah, whatever. We, we got it about two or three weeks ago. <coughs> that's, yeah, we're not looking for medical marijuana. That's, that's not the problem. Manning or what? I'm glad you're here because one of the things we're dealing with is we're having this discussion about economies of scale when uh, unless uh, unless you are much better informed than I think you well maybe you are much better informed I'm just trying to figure out how do we know what the economies of scale are in this industry well a person working for a week in their kitchen with their oven could make enough brownies to keep the town of Hadley, the whole town of Hadley, stoned for a year. Exactly. That's the kind of the scale we're talking about. It's, it's dramatic. Not that I eat brownies, but I know somebody that has. And I know somebody who's like Yeah, I stay corrected, but, but, but you can make enough brownies in a, in a work at 24 7 to keep Hadley stoned for a year. So, so when you talk about processing, it's it's easy to process the stuff. You, you get an ounce of marijuana, you dump it in some Duncan Hines, and you bake it, and it's processed. Well, you make chocolate, yeah. and you do lots of things. Just to, so that I, uh, and, and, and I fully agree that somebody could bake brownie and get away with that's it. That's my point about Okay, but scale. the thing is, how many people are going to sit and do that over and over oh, and over all the time? Point. That's not my point. I'm, 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 the processing I'm looking at is converting the leaves into something, into the tablets and the pills and everything else that are the more... Concentrates. That's the, the, the more common uses. It's okay. Actually, the flowers, is, I mean, it's not the leaves, correct? Flowers, leaves, we're, we're, get, we're, we're, we're getting, we're getting, we're splitting semantics here. It's, it's, really. the, it's the product. So just, just to put in perspective, 100,000 square feet is just over two acres. I understand. We're not saying exactly yeah. with two nine, like almost two and a half. So it, it's not a forty-three thousand five hundred sixty square feet of the acre. Yes. And how many pounds of marijuana? Seventy pounds of marijuana can you can you get out of? Oh my God! This thing is getting way too heavy. No, that's a good question. How many? Forty-three thousand five hundred sixty square feet is one acre. Yes. Come to an acre, Joe. Oh. You could get more than a ton to an acre of flowers. Of flowers, which is the important thing. You don't want them. Stock. Manufacturers, depending what you are, they can take the whole plant. So that's two thousand pounds selling it at uh, eight hundred dollars a pound. There's your economics. It doesn't address any how, how many, how much you can. A ton is how many, how many acres per ton? I'd have to go and check on that. But we, nobody has. Done this before, so it's hard to say. You said a ton of flowers per acre. In general, a ton, 2,000 pounds of tobacco. Compared to tobacco. Tobacco, a ton to an acre is very good yield. Very good. Yes. Under the old Havana, you got broadly, if you get a ton to the acre, you're really doing good. Well, that's the best, that's what you're supposed to be can compare it to anything. Yeah. And then you're talking leaves as opposed to the for both part of the flowers. flowers. And it still has to be dry, so you lose some of that. So that's harvest part. So that, the, that, that is the yield. Okay. 2,000 pounds of, compare it to tobacco. 2,000 pounds is a very good yield, and that's a dry And that leaf. may be high, so I just. But I'm just, I'm just thinking there's more to it than that, though, because you know, there's a process of drying it, at, so you're losing weight. As, just as with tobacco, you hang it to dry, the water's going out of it, the, what you what you deliver to the wholesaler is a ton to an acre. Now. It's a ton to dry. It's sixteen hundred pounds. A ton, ton is easy to figure it out. I, I will still stay with my overall very broad based unscientific comment that the economy of scale on a one, on a forty thousand square foot grower 
is not going to be enough for this to turn into a fully to a commercial uh, business. Yeah, somebody's going to make brownies at the service. Somebody's going to lace some kind of candy with it or something like that. But to process it into the way um, much medical much medical marijuana is processed, you're not going to do that on a forty on a forty thousand square foot process. So having said, it's fairly sophisticated equipment. Having said that, uh, if you try to incorporate the necessary fencing, guard dogs, whatever you're going to use for security, um, is that reasonable to enclose that side area according to state regulations? If you're growing it on that larger scale, you have to. And what do they mean by security? Fence, cameras. Fence, three strands of barbed wire or chain link fence, 10 it's feet tall with razor wire. Right? I probably won't be razor wire because there's too many liability issues with razor wire. It could be six feet plus three strands of barbed wire. So does the state have regulations on something fencing or if you come from a site plan, a special permit, you know that, we would have to come up with something. Yeah. So the state has it or we would? They don't, um, they do not detail what okay. kind of things. So they say security is Security fence, they come out for a site visit. growers in Colombia are switching to, to grow coca leaves. Okay? Yes. This, is, this is a problem the state's going to have to address because it's, it's we call it the economics that normal profits. So marijuana cultivator will run. We've got to find out if we can restrict just the growing and not the processing in both right. crap oh. and the full, we'll find the full out scale. About that. What do they mean by processing? I think they have to trim the little bugs. Would that be processing? But they have to what? They have to trim the little nubs off. No, the that, that would not be processing. What I'm looking at, Joe, is more like you take this leaf and you extract the oil out of it. You turn it into these edible pills. Something that's more of a real, a real process as opposed to just, you know, you're, you're talking about trimming buds, trimming leaves. That's just, uh, how do you, how that's, do you, that's part of the, like, you know, how do you dry it? Do you use a tobacco shed and just hang the whole plant? I'm serious. Or do you, you take the you take the buds off and then dry that? I think you dry it on trays and these these things that you dry pasta. Because that way you have a secure control thing. But do you, um, do you, I don't do you dry the whole plant? Me, but uh, I think uh, I think you dry it in a control okay. situation. So under the definitions, marijuana process or processing is to harvest, dry, cure, trim, and separate parts of the plant by manual or mechanical means. So processing is not manufacturing. Right. Processing is not, uh, is there another definition for? There is product manufacturer. Or okay. Right. So, so may maybe that addresses your concerns more. Okay. To compound, blend, extract, infuse, or otherwise make and prepare a cannabis or marijuana product. So on a cultivator, to cultivate, process, and package, and to transfer, so it does not include, okay, that's that takes care of the definitions right, by themselves. Yep. That's good. Mm -hmm. So certainly, if the processing, I'm just going to use Joe because he's here and he's interested. He's certainly going to harvest. He's certainly going to dry. He's going to cure, trim, and separate by manual or mechanical means. He, I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to keep comparing this to the battle yeah. because it's the closest thing that I think any of us can, can, can think of. Um, <coughs> the ice cures, some of them separate and trim the leaves right now. They do it on the farm, they do it on the barn, they, they, they bring it into the shop, and how are they going to do it? And this would not be any different. It's all part of the so-called agricultural part of it. He's not making cigars, okay? He brings that someplace else, and they make it the cigar, right. and that's the manufacturing right. yep. that we don't want to see. Let me ask you a question. When, when you guys all sell tobacco, 
um, you don't pay a sales tax. It's an agricultural product. On, on this, when a farmer would sell it, would that still be an agricultural product? Marijuana is not an agricultural product. The state has specifically exempted marijuana as being an agricultural product. So you pay the sales tax? I don't know. I, I, I'm just saying it's not, it's, the state does not consider marijuana and agricultural product. They get specifically exempted if I don't know what kind of taxes they will be. Yeah, we don't give tax advice here. Talk to your accountant. Yeah. <laughs> but th that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So it's not an agricultural it's product? It's not considered an agricultural product. It's not quite right. Do you have to give back your 61A money if you plant on a... You cannot plant on it. Well, well, 61 a, I don't know about 61A. You can withdraw 61A. 61 61A is a state reduced tax. You, do, you never got any state money for that. That's a good question. I don't know. We asked that question of um, David Nixon to us. The guy. The tax collectors. Yeah, and he said there was no issue. Okay. But if they withdraw what did he say? 61 a He said there was no issue with 61, chapter 61. You can't grow on 61A. You can. Yes. Okay. Because it's a current year tax break. Okay. And you get your 3% anyway. Okay. Getting back to the district here. So product main product, no. <clears throat> marijuana product manufacturer, my opinion, everything I'm saying is my opinion, I agree. We only want it in the industrial district. What you have. That's what you said, yes. Anybody disagree with that? Where is how much industrial area in this town? Not a lot. Right. So most of the time they're going to have to take it off site, take it out of town to be processed. Well, so why have, couldn't they do it into a business? We have the industrial park off of North Maple, which has the one lot left, but with wetlands issues. Um, we have the triangle of Mill Valley Road. Route 9 yeah. at South Maple Street, which it's includes we have uh, all the Mount Farms Mall. All Mount Farms Mall area. Yeah. And the all land the land east of 116, pretty much. Most, yeah, most what good is that? You can't do that. That is non accessible one. land, no. and a lot of, most of that is in APR as well. Yeah, most of them are wet. Yeah. Well, three feet of but um, if it's manufacturing, it should only be in the industrial district, in my opinion. It's manufacturing. So that's right. That's, that's, that's the correct method. assumption. It's an industrial. It's an industrial use. It's an industrial zone product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marijuana retailer. Yeah, I agree. Business districts and industrial okay. districts. Okay. Independent testing lab. Industrial and business uses. Yes, I agree with that. Anybody disagree with anything? No. no. Okay. Just go back. Back a sec. When. Uh, so the retailer in uh, the uh, um, the retailer in the business limited business and local business. I would think so. Only reason I say that is that these are not going to be big stores. Mm. You're talk, you're, if, 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 if the store is... Size is limited. I'm going to say, I think, does, is it limited by the state? I think it is. It is. Yes. You're yeah. Yeah. Back but you're only limited to two, two retail businesses in town. Yes. So you're, right, you're right, though, Jim. It could be as big as John's old package store in North Africa. That's right. right. If they're not going to be big wall, places. Hole in, hole in the wall. That's, they, they don't, they're, they're, yeah, they're not going to be very big to have this stuff. So if we're only going to limit it to two areas, to two, to two businesses, let it put it in one of the three. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I sincerely doubt they're going to do anything but Route 9 simply for visibility. Mm -hmm. I doubt they're going to put it. I mean, Boysburg could apply, but I can't imagine with the requirements for a marijuana retailer, they yeah. have that kind of capital. I don't think they'll be having a pumpkin day in October for selling pot there. Yeah, for selling it. Um, independent testing lab, 
Yeah, I guess that's right. And the lim all the business districts and the industrial. Mm -hmm. Now, micro. What is a micro business? So, um, well, down here there is a no that says this is a small growing operation up to five thousand square feet. And if towns want to allow these in rural areas, you should consider limiting them to indoor, or outdoor. But based on what you've said already, already maybe you want to allow this in uh, your uh, agricultural if, if it's, if it's residential. It's, uh, 5,000 square foot, I would think you'd want them in ag rest and limited business as well, and with a special mm -hmm. permit. Right. Anybody disagree with that one? Marijuana research facility. That's real. Where's the building inspector come in on this? This is. He asked on every site plan and he do the same thing. He gets a copy of all the site plans and he can comment. So he cannot issue no permits for but anything okay. to do it just so much as fast as this point. That's correct. Research facility. So what what are we talking about for a research facility? You know, Five thousand square feet, fifty thousand square feet? Uh, well in the definitions it's not Someone's going to have Limited. to do some research on marijuana. I mean, it, there really is none out there. Well, if, if they're doing uh, research, uh, education research, is this, uh, does, it, does it, the uh, Dover Amendment have something to do with this? Can you put it wherever they want to? <laughs> if huh? UMass wants to put its marijuana testing farm in Hadley, then um, probably they can. Yeah. Um, if um, you ask me about that. because they get federal money, so they can't. Sure. Right. Anything right, I so do, I do outside of you guys. So this is not going to be associated with Stockbridge. Is nope. So? No. Suffer. So so sign something. So at least not not this decade. Yeah. No. Yes. No, that's right. It's not something to go remember. So I guess uh, I don't have any problem with it being, if there was a square foot, uh, well, yeah, that, that's sort of vague. We just don't have anything to go with. So yeah. we, we, we need a little more definition of what's a, what's a research facility like, okay. so basically square footage. Research could be anything. Like it could be developing new strains. It could be testing, taking, buying in some product and doing human right. testing. Yeah. Um, yes, it could it's be more all, of an ATA. It could be just an office. It could be all done with the inside uh, 5,000 square foot. It could be 5,000 square foot. It could be 100,000 square foot. That's the only thing. Or it could be 1,000 square foot. That's exactly. So do you have other uh, research facilities in town? Or yes, you allow they're, they're only in, allowed in the industrial district. So that's probably a good way to go. Well, why not? Oh, for time, I guess for the time being, yeah, maybe that's what we can do. Leave, leave it to the industrial district because we don't know what it means. All right? Uh, and if I find out any other information, right, okay. I'll let you know. Yeah, uh, although I'm, I'm seeing, it's, it's so loosely worded that I'm, I'm seeing a farmer tinkering with a new strain in an area separated from the rest of, like, uh, like all natural foods are separate, organics are separate, grown in separate segregated fields. I can see someone tinkering with something, not really marketing it, and I don't see a harm in having research. Again, we don't, it just is, it's too vague to, you know, to go with here, right? Yeah, I'll see what else Marijuana transporter. I think that should only be the industrial district the way marijuana transporter is defined. Okay, not in business? Not in the business because it's basically it's basically a uh, trucking terminal. Right. Yeah, all right. And I don't want to see that in any of our business districts. No, that's not a good idea. Well, it's not a good idea. In the regular business area. Yeah. Oh, not. Tractor trailers. Yeah. Right. 
um, any other type of licensed marijuana related business except a medical marijuana treatment center. Only, yeah, because I don't know what that means, so I think industrial is the right place to leave that, mm -hmm. that last That's one there. That's just to cover whatever else we haven't thought of yet. Well, I yeah, I mean, for the time, <laughs> and, and the unknown, leave it where it's the industrial. What the hell is a treatment center? What is it? Somebody is addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In Waitley is a group that are interested in doing a dispensary but being holistic, so they educate at the same time. That's not us. Educate at the same time as selling. So they'll have a, a medical person on site to give, treat, and so we customize them. Ma marijuana is not considered a holistic, holistic herb? Uh, <coughs> that's a good one. So what I think we need to do, <laughs> what I think we need to do there is, you do have a definition of a medical marijuana treatment center. Right, and also. that's probably in your other regulations. Yeah, I think we right? just have yeah. to conform whatever this is to whatever we already have. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it should be. Now we get into the actual bylaw. Can I just go back to marijuana code? I'm just looking at this here. Yes. So, what is agriculture? Which one of these can rural residential? Uh, the first, okay, going across left to right. Rural is now residential. Yeah. Residential is ag residential. Okay. Commercial is limited business, yep. local business, and regular business. And industrial is industrial. So under the ag residential cultivator would be allowed now? Yes. So that in So that the first the craft cultivator, craft cooperative, yeah. and marijuana cultivator would both be allowed in the ag residential and the business districts by special permit site plan approval. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just a question, technical question. Uh, if, for example, someone is growing the marijuana in the residential agricultural district and they get paid, uh, can they put their money in the bank? A homeowner growing marijuana for themselves cannot sell it. So somebody's got to have a big... They can grow up to 12 plants. Somebody's got to have a big safe, a lot of guard dogs. There's only one bank in Massachusetts. That how much? How much? Seems. How much usable marijuana product can you get out of 12 plants? How many pounds? If you're a good grower, you might get a half pound to one pound per plant, depending how much space you give the plants, how you train the plants. So that's, 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 so that's 12 right. pounds. That's a good question. <coughs> it what? is a good question because, you know, when I was on the bank board, there was questions about that so the other question is if you are a physician or a dentist and you really can't renew your license if you're involved in this kind of business because marijuana is still a schedule one narcotic under the federal rules and regulation and that's what you have to have so there are some federal limitations on this even though the state has approved it so to put in context again a canning job or canning job Act reasonably well as one else in the dry floor. But, but Joe, to answer your question a little bit more, I suspect in order to trace the money that the IRS is going to ask for an exemption like they did in Colorado from the FDIC to tax you. How much did you make on it? So, oh, you're going to get, you're probably going to get paid cash if you, you know. Even though you grow it at home, well, that's not, why legally you're supposed to not to not sell it. Where you're, you're, the people are going to be selling it, okay? It, 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 so Twelve plants. Twelve plants at four hundred dollars an ounce is worth seventy-seven thousand dollars. It's, it's an interesting predicament yep. that, 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 that's, that's going to have to be dealt with. Yep. So. Yeah. So, Century Bank is apparently the only one that will handle sales, and that's from growers as well as dispensaries. So Much. maybe there'll be no cash. They might just deposit transfer. Back on to page seven, the actual bylaw. 
Well, the one bank could be. Okay, enough with the bank. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. We're going to get through this bylaw tonight. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the first section is purpose. Yep. Uh, do you want me to read through that? No. Yes? Okay. No. So that um, is pretty good to everyone. And then number two would be definitions that you know, we had right. talked about. Previously. Right. Because we don't have okay. a separate definition right. section. We have to have it. So we'll insert that right here. And then that would make applicability number three. Um, so nothing in this section, you know, supersedes no. federal state laws and all that. Okay, um, number, the additional requirements and conditions. Um, in addition to the standard requirements for uses permitted by right, or requiring special permit or site plan approval, the following shall apply to all marijuana establishments. So, what you, section are you in? I'm in what is listed here is number three, and it will be number four eventually. Page seven. Page seven. Oh. Yeah, we'll have to renumber this thing to be in compliance with our, yes. with our section. But that's right. right, right, and I think it will be section 30, it looks like to me. But, right, okay. Um, so, use. Any type of marijuana establishment may only be involved in the uses permitted by definition and may not include other businesses or services. No marijuana shall be smoked, eaten, or otherwise ingested on the premises. The hours of operation shall be signed by the special permit granting authority, but in no event um, shall uh, facility be open to the public and no sales or distribution shall occur between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. That's the state. Uh, state right? Yes. Okay. No marijuana establishment may commence operation or apply for a building permit prior to its receipt of all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to its final license from the Cannabis Control Commission. And the number of adult use retail establishments to be located, and this is shall not exceed 20%. So I think we decided to keep that. Okay, the next section is about the physical requirements. Um, what are I, all aspects of any marijuana establishment except for the transportation of products? Um, <laughs> must take place at a fixed location within a fully enclosed building. So, including greenhouse and shall not be ex visible from the exterior of the building. So, from what we were talking about today, this would be different here. Right? All aspects of so, the question is, do we want to allow open growth yep. or that require that all growth be fully enclosed. fully enclosed. Then we need to find out what the state requires for security. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have those kind of warehouses in, in this town. Right. Right. So they could, someone could build one. So what would a greenhouse be considered? Or they could do any greenhouse, right? Well, that, it, it would it's within the definition within a fully enclosed building including greenhouses but that would probably not extend to a hoop house but, but you can't get a building permit for a hoop house but you can for a greenhouse right yeah so it would be a greenhouse not a hoop house we refer to greenhouses here now so what we're talking about with the hoop house is that the, the it's a basically it's a it's a tunnel of a half moon shaped mm -hmm. metal rods covered mm -hmm. with plastic, mm -hmm. which allows product to build. Some of them are I guess pretty much year round, mm -hmm. but they allow you to work on it, it's a, a mini greenhouse or mm -hmm. plastic greenhouse. Plastic. Well, what kind of security around that? That's what he's saying. They're, they're saying there's no there, there isn't any. Really. There is any couple of nights when you're inside of it. Yeah, but do you not if you got a big fence around it. Well that's different. That's what we gotta find out. What does the state require for security? Right. And a lot depends on that. I remember seeing stuff in there about security. It definitely was a lot of there was very specific security requirements for outside growth 
for medical marijuana, which is, I think, really what drove a lot of that inside because they were defining the side, either the fence. And, um, so there is something out there. Give me any idea how much marijuana is consumed in Hampshire County yearly before the law? Is there, are there any statistics on that? No? No, no estimates? Nobody's in the I'm just curious. Okay, and so the next um, item is no outside storage is permitted. That would be related to the security issue as well, I don't think. Uh, next, no marijuana retailer shall have a gross square floor area open to the public in excess of 2,500 square feet. So that is from the state. Mm -hmm. And that's what we talked about, that these aren't going to be very large. Uh, ventilation. All marijuana cells shall be ventilated in such a manner that no pesticides, pesticides, chemicals used in cultivation or processing are dispersed up into the outside atmosphere. Uh, and no odor from marijuana or press can be detected by a person with an unimpaired or otherwise normal sense of smell at the exterior of the medical marijuana business or at adjoining uh, use or property. So that's the thing that might be the pesticides. Complicated if it's outside too. It's exactly right. How are you going to enforce that? Right? I have security um, information from the cannabis oh. advisory board. Um, so it states that work must be done and physical items approved by the commission within within an area that is enclosed and secured in a manner that prevents access by persons. My phone just died. Convenient, <laughs> um, but it needs to be enclosed by a fence. Enclosed, okay. so they require. So, but at that. that point, and if the state defines so some kind of security yeah. standards, it's the and then that would be in their license. Then that would be the, then that that's great. Okay, that means the open grow would be permitted under those conditions. Okay, because it's yeah. not going to be cheap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. I, you know, I'll just double check with Larry and see if he has okay. any other more advice about that. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, pesticide, insecticide, and other chemicals used in the cultivation or processing shall not be dispersed into the outside atmosphere. So if you're, if we allow for the outside cultivation, it's going to be dispersed. Right. There are no pesticides allowed to use on marijuana. I was going to say because it's such a sponge. Well, that's the. What they have said with MDOT have said no. Do they have a list of their pre preferred sprays or? There's got to be some some bug that will eat it or. I'm going to say organic and sprays. Organic could be used, but. Yeah. Well, organic has a list of copper sulfate. Yes, uh, they could be used, but not regular restricted use pesticides. Right, okay. Copper, copper sulfate, even though it's claimed to be organic, really isn't. And <laughs> some, are, some are saying that it, it's probably carcinogenic, but if the farmer couldn't use that, then they'd go out of business. That's so true. an a, a organic farmer claiming that he's using organics just because he's using copper sulfate probably scientifically is not correct. It's approved by <coughs> So how do, how do we reconcile the we don't, atmosphere? So we don't. We, we, well, if we, have, if we do allow outside growth, we're probably not going to have that. Yeah, and you probably, right. you, you'll have odor from outside growth if the, the plant has an odor. Right. Right. Um, yeah. if, you, if you have an acre of marijuana, you're going to smell like a skunk farm. Okay. So Only at one time. You're going to what? Okay. Typo. Like skunk farm. Typo here. No. Okay. In B42. Otherwise, normal sense of smell at the exterior of the medical marijuana business. Oh, look at that! So, yeah. Ooh, good one, Bill. So, we you might want to keep a requirement about ventilation from structures. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're processing it, you know, you're growing it. Right. You're going to have a minor odor. Right. But it's going to be wide open air. Yes. And. The gentleman's mm -hmm. point, it's only going to be for a short period of time and a short period of time yeah. of the year. But if you're processing it, it's going to be different right. inside, and that's where you want to make sure there's no outside so, odors. So how long does it take for a so no plant to, to grow from that. plant to, to fruition? Picture corn. 
if you plant it in May, you will be harvesting in October because it's related to day length. Okay. It won't turn to flowering until it gets to 12 hour day length. So it's in the fall that it's... So you really can't get two crops in in a year? Not in the field. No. No. Corn might. And, 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 and you don't hope for not an early frost. No. Or rain. a lot of rain because no. you get bug rot. <laughs> As being a farmer, this is, this is not the greatest year. Yeah, no. Depending where you are. Of course, the farmers that are on dry soil love the year. The farmers that are down here in the valley, not so much. Yeah. So Two of rain today. You say you're working on different strains. I am not. Oh, you're not, I'm sorry. No. I gave okay. that as an example okay. of what a researcher could do. Okay. Okay, should we move on? Signage? Yes, signage. Shall be displayed on the exterior of Marijuana Establishment's entrance in plain sight of public stating that access to this facility is limited to individuals 21 years or older and two text two inches in height. So that's from the state regulations. Yep. Um, all other signage must comply with all other applicable sign regulations. Uh, cannabis plants, products, and paraphernalia shall not be visible from the outside of buildings in which the cannabis establishment is located and shall comply with the requirements of regulations. Any artificial screening device erected to eliminate the view from the public will be subject to a vegetative screen. And the board shall consider the surrounding landscape and view shed to determine if artificial screen will be out of character with the Okay, C, location. No fix. Yep. I don't think we need to read every single section. Yep, okay. Let's just go by section C1, any comments? Section C2, okay. any comments? Okay, that's otherwise we're going to be here great. until midnight, maybe. Yep. <laughs> Later. All right, so any comments on, on section three? C, location. No. Three hundred feet, 300 feet is just from K, uh, uh, K through 12 schools, not where children congregate. Right, is a distinction with yep. the medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only question I have here is that uh, oh, section C four or. Good question. No, no marijuana establishment should be located parcel which abuts a residential use. Um, we have those all over town. Right. And especially if we start allowing it. So we could, I would just say we strike section C4. Yes. Right. Take it out. Say that. Because. Especially if you're going to have fields. Yes, exactly. They're, they're, they're going to they're going to abut a residential area no matter what you do. Okay. You could though put in a distance from the street. I think the Cannabis Control Commission does. So you could say as you have, you don't put your bird right on the edge of the street because then it would be visible. Right. Right. So we've already said it. It's not I don't know visible. It's I don't know if there we had setback requirements in here. Because that would take care of also yeah. then some of the older problems. Mm -hmm. The visibility. Yeah, we, we could actually put front front year and side yard setbacks on that. Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, yeah, that's a that's that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. That would be a good section for it. No marijuana establishment shall be located within you know, X number of feet. I would say. What, what are four, 100 feet, 100 feet front yard setback? Should we look at your what you have for your other setbacks? Yeah, for, but I don't think that's going to be appropriate. Okay. 15 and 15 <laughs> aside. So I'm going to say 100 foot front yard, 50 foot rear. 100 foot, that's a long way, isn't it? But you're talking the field. So you're, you're not talking somebody's going to have a farmer's own plant, no tobacco, 100 feet. That's right. Them. They go. But this is, but this, this, is, this is not tobacco. I know. Okay, this we want to screen so the people don't see it readily from the street. So 100 foot setback, 50 foot sides, and 50 foot rear. So how do you determine what's the front on a farm field? The front, the side nearest the street. And what's the, what if the rear? So, 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 so if, they're, if they're raising this field way back from the road, then they meet the 100 to 50 foot from the field. And what if there's a road in the back? Yeah. Uh, Public road. 
could have it 100 feet yeah. from any well, road. So we have 100 foot from any road, mm -hmm. from any public way. Mm -hmm. If there's no public way but just a farm road, then that yeah. doesn't count. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a public road. It's going to be a public We already address a corner lot has to meet setbacks on both sides elsewhere in the bylaw. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So 100, yeah, 150 and 50. 150, 100, and then all, all those are 50. So 50 for the side, Tim? Yes. How long do we want these fields to be screened for the whole duration of the growing season? Yes. Because at the end, as this gentleman just told us, this sink going to be eight feet high. Okay. So let's say we got a 50 foot setback on 150 and three, 100 on the front and 50 on all three sides. If somebody was to grow field corn, that grows 10 feet tall, it's screened. Yeah. Okay? And it's screened for the majority of the season, the, the marijuana would be there. It would be growing as fast as the marijuana. Okay. But okay. you'd have to have a fence on Well, they're still, gonna, they're still gonna meet the fence requirements, right. but as far as the screening goes, field corn would work. Some of us are smiling because that was done 20 years ago in Hadley as a method of screen camouflaging, screening there. Until the hill Pick your own. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Pick your own corn, right? Yes. <laughs> That's why they fly helicopters around here all the time. Is it 50 feet to the greenhouse or to the fence? 50 feet to the plow. To, to, from, in other words, if it's to your property line. So if you're raising it entirely within your property and you're surrounding it with other property you own, you're all set. So, so are, you, are you planting no. the field corn and the marijuana in the same week? Because if if you do, then it's not going to be screened for uh, until the 4th of July. No, Joe, I think your question has to do with the setback, the setback regarding a greenhouse. greenhouse edge yeah, or is it just a yeah I'd say 50 feet to the product or 100 feet to the product. Yeah. So you're, you're going to plant seedlings for the marijuana, correct? Yeah, but the greenhouse is different. Than you're going to plant corn outside. seed. I'm just that's right. Yeah. Right. But that's why I say 50 feet to the product. Well, the greenhouse, it's going to be I'm talking yeah. a foot or so there. Just the wall of the greenhouse. No. The marijuana establishment, we're basically talking not, not a retail facility. We're talking marijuana growing facility, cultivating facility. In other words, if somebody has a, uh, I'm talking basically an open grow. If, you're, if you've got a greenhouse or something like that, that's a little bit different. Or if you, or you want to see even a greenhouse with a 50 foot. Establishment. And the definition, definition is, grow up. any of these things are included in establishment. They're all included in establishments. Yeah. So the, only, the only thing would be whether, yeah, open grow would be the only 150-50-50 that I'm worried about. That would be for open grow. Yeah. Right. And I'm fine for greenhouse. Greenhouse just to comply with zoning. Whatever that is. Because that's a, we'll consider a greenhouse a structure. So, depends what sort of greenhouse. Greenhouses with concrete floors are structures. Greenhouses, plastic greenhouses are considered fire equipment. Uh, yeah, but we're saying a plastic hoop house, you can't get a building permit for anyways. And you, you don't can't, need a building. Right, and, and, and you, you uh, security on that would be a lot Still more. Still a fence. A fence, okay. Well, if, and, if, and if, it's a, if it's a greenhouse and it complied with zoning, with the fence and security, I don't have a problem with simply complying with zoning. So that's what we need to put in here. Yes, we we we, do, we need we need section C4 so to I be a bit more descriptive as far as right the growth and grow, and then the and you have other requirements for greenhouses. Only elsewhere? that they comply with zoning, current zoning, and I would say if the marijuana so, okay. marijuana greenhouse complies with current zoning and the security that will be required by the state, then that's fine. We're not looking for any perspective. So, right, this is going to be part of the zoning. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we need to make sure we have greenhouses for marijuana, you know, those, any requirement you want in here. When we're talking about security, we're not talking about potential violence, are we? 
I mean, part of the reason you have these turf wars in the inner cities is because they're defending their right to sell drugs. And so by allowing farmers and other people to sell, grow it and sell it, we're basically encroaching on that turf. And, you know, I think society well, has to be prepared for what they're bringing on us. You could have, you could have <coughs> violence come up to Joe, Joe Tchaikovsky's field and that, that growing facility destroyed. Okay, I'm just, nobody's thought about that. But that very real. That decision has been made. I understand, the, but, the, I, the, but the, nobody's the, thought about this. The details, the, the devil's being, the details being, yeah, the details. It's, it's going to be messy. That's why you have a security kit. With cameras. Is the newsy help? Yeah, you're going to need a lot of hungry dogs, too. To yeah. Okay. But, okay. We'll get Eddie Glenn's Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, last one there. Cool. No, so, no other concerns about um, that section? No. So, so drive through, no drive through service, so that it'll be right. pick your own. You can't drive up your window and say, I want to buy something. Yeah, well, but that, that applies I want to get out of my car. To, uh, throw it in the back. Yeah. The establishment includes the grower and the retailer. So. Okay. Reporting requirements? Any yeah, I got a yeah, I got a yeah. question on this one. This, goal, this applies to basically every single section in reporting requirements. It says what you're supposed to do. My comment is, what happens if they don't? You probably can order them to stop operations. We vote their permit. Okay. Who? Th that's what I'm saying. It's not clear what happens if they don't comply. Who, who actually checks on them? All of them. Okay. It says. Uh, so how does that happen with your other site plan special permits? That's why he's asking. That's why I'm asking. Once <laughs> this is this is a different it requirement. Happen. Once you comply with site plan approval, you put up your building, you put up your screening, you put up your parking, you conduct your business. Okay, there's no reporting requirements in any other section of our zoning bylaw. This okay. has reporting requirements. If somebody doesn't report to the appropriate agency, what happens and who does it? You could think reporting to the police department the fire department, the health department, <coughs> they have no authority to enforce a zoning bylaw. We need, I'm not picking any, right. yep. I'm just saying we need clarification on what happens and by whom. Right. I'm not even sure that we need a special permit granting authority. Once we have granted the permit, we're really out of the loop. The enforcement falls to the zoning enforcement officer, who's also the building inspector. Right. So well, that's what I would think. But and but, but, but he this, carries out your re regulations. So yeah, but, you would but want this it, this is know. a little bit different in that every year I'm just going to pick on Joe because he's here. Okay. But I'm, I'm not picking on Joe. I'm just picking him using him as an example. I'm picking him as a example. We grant Joe a permit to do the open grow this year, and he complied with everything. Great. Three years down, or and he doesn't need to renew this every year. If I'm correct. It's a three to five year period. Usually. Okay. But so, many towns are requiring um, him to report to the town each year. I know that's my point. Right. So, what what happens if he doesn't report? Year three, he's got a five year permit. Year three, he says, "The heck with him. I'm not going to report this year." What happens? And who and who who enforces? This, this is this this could this be similar this, this is a different kind of a bylaw because every year we're talking of a growing season, it's a new event, as opposed to any other business in town is basically 324, 365 or whatever they run. Most of the time, once they put the building up, which is what zoning is concerned with, they're hunky dory. This is a growing thing that has lots of other requirements to it, not just zoning, but I mean, they, they, they fall under the zoning umbrella on a lot of this stuff. And, and the reporting requirements, you know, I'm not sure we need a lot of these reporting requirements, but we do need something to, for check and balance every year and to make sure that whoever gets these open grows or even the enclosed permits 
because the involved commit is something that, you know, they're going to run 365, but they're going to make sure that everything is kept up. And primarily with the open road, it is a very special, not a very special, but a seasonal issue. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get a permit every year from, say, the town? No, he just said it's good for five, typically it's good for five years. Well, but we used to require accessory apartments to come back every year. We could have similar, something similar to that. We? Well, this is, it's well, already right. built into this. Right. It's already built into this. But what I'm saying is under accessory apartments, it was pretty obvious. The planning board had authority to say no, stop if you don't comply, if you get complaints. Well, I think it would be the same thing if that's in these regulations. But the planning board has no enforcement, and no enforcing authority. Well, they won well, number three. In other words, if you report to the police chief or to the fire chief or to the board of health, which is which, which is what this is, and they have the building, well, they say building okay. commissioner inspector, so that's well, the last line, and the right. special permit granting authority, which that's is you. Right. Okay, so does the special permit? And I'm asking this question. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be you know wise here. Yeah. Does the special permit granting authority? have the authority to revoke that permit and say, you can't do this anymore. If they're not it, it in should, compliance it, with it, yes. It, it should say that in here. Okay. That, though, I think is inconsistent with what the town council has told us. Right. Okay, so. so the planning board has no enforcing authority for town council. See, once, once, even though the bylaw talks in terms of we can uh, approve, modify, amend, and revoke, what town council has told us is that once action is taken on rely in reliance on our approval, you know, the farmer goes out and gets a loan from a commercial lender to build a new greenhouse. I know that technically he can't in today's environment, but once things are done in reliance on our approval, our ability to rescind the approval is gone. Even if they're not in compliance. Correct. I have been told the opposite of that in other communities. I've just told that on to a go, solar. We have issue. to work through the building, the zoning enforcement officer. Only he can issue a cease and desist. We cannot. Okay. That's that's uh, the opinion of Colton okay. and Hay. And, and if, and if we've got law. a different, a, if we've got a, a different opinion from some other town council, that would be interesting mm -hmm. because we'd like to see that and find out. Which one is correct? Is there, is, or is there someplace in the You know, I'm not disagreeing. Mm -hmm. I would, we would probably, in some cases, like to have some kind of revolting authority. But we right. don't. And in this case, do we or don't we? But how do you know? I'll find out more that about that. In compliance well. and non compliance. Well, if they're, report, if they're not reporting, then they're not in compliance. Right, and if you have, there are certain Reporting conditions and right, your right decision. Under this, under this section, it says what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Okay. That's one of the comments on this whole reporting permit section is, or what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I've got one section. Section 4, it says the owner or manager of a marijuana establishment is required to respond by phone or email within 24 hours of contact by a town or city official concerning the marijuana establishment at the phone number or email address. What town or city official? Can they, in other words, the way this section is written, a town official, any town official, can act on their own and require all kinds of information of the owner. Mm -hmm. Which the police should be tied wow. back into the sections. The prior. way this section is written, any one of us can right. go to a marijuana establishment, mm -hmm. including Mr. Sykowski, and say, show me your papers. Mm -hmm. And if he can't produce them, we can shut them down. And including a, a member of the select board, Member of the Board of Health. Uh, right. Which, which, the which, the way board. this is written, it's like very wrong. Mm -hmm. It should be. Yeah, you can get a bunch of people that are just going to harass somebody. That's exactly right. That's what I'm, that's my point here. That's we, I'm not saying that this is not a, not a, I think this is 
the intent is correct, mm -hmm. but I think it needs to be clarity, very clear that they can't act independently. This is, it says by a town or city official, which means what? I think they mean as a, as a board acting as a majority, but that's not what it says. Well, you, I mean, you could put a specific person in there, like the building inspector. That's, that would be much better. Okay. Okay. I mean, the last thing I want to mean, somebody's got a real issue with anything, they could just, like John said, they could just harass the, the, the heck out of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be within the law. <laughs> or at least it's only law. All right. Okay. Uh, should we move on to the next section? Yep. Any comments? And here we had, you know, referred to this a little bit earlier, transfer discontinuance of use. Yeah. And I have similar comments on this. You know, it, it, it says that do this, do this, or this will happen. You know, or what happens if it doesn't, or they don't do that. Okay, it's, it's all got back to doing with with who's the what's the enforcement, and what's the penalty, and who has the enforcing authority. So, the um, we do have a question here about the. Um, being specific to the owner, I'm thinking more like liquor licenses. Not only is there an owner, but there's also a manager. Um, I'm just thinking that there could be, it's very easy to visualize that um, someone, instead of my company selling to your company and you're taking title in a new name, that would clearly trigger this. But if you buy the stock in my company, now we're dealing with someone, and then she buys the stock from you. We're now dealing with someone who has never been approved by the board. Now, I don't know if the state. Cannabis control speaks to that. They do address that, okay. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I didn't come for that. I know, but really the individual that's a, a, you know, a felon or like that can apply for one of these. There are strict guidelines on who can apply and who cannot apply. Depends. A felon apparently cannot. But somebody with a misdemeanor civil offense, they had some marijuana in the past, that might actually help them. <laughs> Boy, do we, we know a lot of people that would help them. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a very complex thing. A lot of those people need help. Looking at the drunk as a bartender. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, get back. The, uh, the bond issue. Are we satisfied with that? Uh, is it going to be similar to the solar panel? Yeah, the removal bond. Yes. That, that is a much more standard form of bond than the performance bond we okay. were trying to deal with in the past. You're going to have a bond on here for what reason? What's it going to do? So we talked about that with the medical marijuana, and I think we got an estimate from the, the bond was set by an estimate of the police chief of how long it would take a paid detail to go into an abandoned medical marijuana facility and empty it out. I think that's, that was the concern. You know, we don't, we're not concerned about office chairs being left behind. That's the landlord's problem. We were concerned about product being left behind if uh, the operator went out of business. So that would be what, you know, like a sub uh, subject of this proposal? Yeah, so the, the, idea. I, the idea was to have, uh, I, I think what we worked out with the medical marijuana dispensary was we figured a dollar amount based on the police chief's estimate of what a paid detail of two officers, what it would cost to have a paid detail of two officers enter the premises and remove all of the inventory and dispose, and dispose of it. Big Lots of order. And it wasn't it wasn't huge. It was on the order of uh, because the 
the medical marijuana is limited to the amount of inventory you can have on hand. So the police chief was able to determine that it was going to be something like three hours, two officers at three hours at private detail rates would be X number of dollars adjusted for inflation. Uh, I'm going to say it was less than a thousand dollars. Although I don't recall for sure. Yeah, if you got a big facility, that ain't going to cost more than a thousand dollars. Well, that's going to have to be on a case by case basis, right? So if it's having someone go in and, and cut down uh, two acres of plants. That's different than emptying the display case at a uh, medical dispensary. You know, the other thing is, you, know, you cut it down and just narrow it up, depending on, it depends on a lot of things. Okay. In the past, they had, they had them go in with a corn chopper. Okay. All right, so anything else in that section? shareholders, partners, members, managers, um, that seems to be a lot of information that for a closely held corporation or LL, you know, two or three member LLC, that's one thing, but if we're dealing with a, are there any New York Stock Exchange registered companies that are in this? Business. This is required by the state law. This is not something that's unique to this. Is it? There's a company in Canada whose symbol is weed. I'm almost positive. I saw that. Check on that. Huh? This is no, we can, she can check that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's not in here. Ford. Ford G. So it just seems that. Uh, 4G is requiring a lot of information that isn't necessarily going to help us in the process of a zoning approval. I, I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, if it's in if it's in the state requirements for them to apply, we really want to know the local people that are going to be involved in this, and maybe if there's an owner someplace out of sight. So the, the owners. Cheap. Well, don't you want to know who's connected with the corporation? Well, not not the help, but the owners. Yeah, but not for not from a zoning perspective. You know, if they if they have a license, they've already satisfied the state that they are not ineligible to do this. Uh, you know, I really don't care who is a shareholder or. The, the, I don't. I don't really care who. For, from a zoning perspective, I don't care who's doing it. It's irrelevant. It really yes. we, we want to know the local manager for, for contact information. We want that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, but the overall, all the like all of this stuff, you know, officers, mm -hmm. directors, shareholders, members. So probably just the owner and the manager. O owner, and local manager, or supervisor, yeah. whatever they want to call them. Um, Talk to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the down to earth Makes people. Sense. I mean, somebody that's going to be like a local farmer is a little bit different. But I mean, somebody that's going to be a, a corporation, like Bill, Bill says, we don't know who could be involved from a big corporation. 
you just nor want do we care right. probably in most of the cases right but if you need to contact we, someone then you have yeah, to. yes yeah we, we approved us we approved a walmart without knowing who the shareholders were yes. of <laughs> the company yes so okay good or bad. well we approved a building and 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 that i mean i, I told people many times on that particular one we're not approving the walmart we're approving a building that is a retail building and this is the site the occupant of the building from a zoning perspective is irrelevant you may not like them we may not like them but if they meet the requirements we have to approve it mm -hmm. sure has there been any, any consolidation if you know of retail stores saying colorado or california or are they just dispersed is there are there thousands of different businesses selling this or are they being bought up and are they becoming more concentrated? Many of the medical dispensaries did come from out of state into the state. Uh -huh. okay. With the idea that they could switch quickly to recreational, it wasn't so quick. No. They hate the 100,000 square feet, but they're limited by that too. I would like to add similar, a similar comment to Section H. Um, it's asking for a lot of detail, proposed security measures. Right. That's all becomes a public record when it's filed with us. We cannot withhold it from your friendly local Ooh. crime syndicate who might want to break in. Um, yes. I don't. I don't think we need that information. Um, We don't want to know what Mr. Sikowski does for security in detail. We simply want to know that he either has cameras or fencing or dogs or whatever he may have. How it works, which is what this is basically asking for, and who the, who the alarm company is, that's his, the, more, the less we know, the better he is on that one. The more secure he is. So if, if there are state regs that detail security, that's fine. If the police chief wants to have a discussion with him about security, that's fine. Um, I don't want a security plan sitting in an unlocked uh, filing cabinet in our office as a public record. And to some extent, we also don't need a detailed floor plan because we're not concerned with the interior. We're concerned with how the, the structure relates to its site and to its neighboring sites. Okay, and if there's lighting, you're not concerned about Light, that? Well, if lighting we're concerned We with. want to know what okay. the lighting is, but um, that's actually addressed in the site plan approval bylaw anyway, I think. So, um, we want to know, okay, so under section H, we want to know the details showing exterior proposed security measures, lighting, fencing, gates and alarms, we don't care about. After this, we want to know security measures for the marijuana facility, including lighting and fencing, ensuring the safety and of employees and patrons, and to protect the premises from theft or other criminal activity. We don't care about the alarms and the gates. Okay. Because somebody may say, well, we want to, they, we don't know what they're going to, we're going to provide them this. And it turns out to be what Bill says is unique to them. I mean, like, you know, who, the security, who is the security company? You know, zoning doesn't really care. We want them to be secure enough that he, they are protected and we don't infringe on I mean, what we're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think even we need Section I. The in interior floor plan, that's a building issue. I agree with Bill. So some of uh, Section K is already incorporated in our site plan approval by law. Uh, although I'm not sure this is the size that triggers it, so it, it's fine to 
section in. I'm not. I'm not sure that we. I mean, I'm getting back to close up Do we really care about their operating procedures or their marketing and advertising? And you're concerned about hours of the operation. Oh, hours of operation. That's already addressed. That's already addressed. We, we are concerned with waste disposal because we want to see what's going on. Transportation, yes. Energy efficiency and conservation, that's not a selling issue. Marketing and advertising, how much like operating procedures, marketing and advertising, energy efficiency and conservation. Um, I would say for security, I would put general security, not security and alarms. Decommissioning, yeah, that's probably a good one. Well, that's addressed already in the decommissioning bond. So back a couple of sections. So this is just pulling together all the requirements of the application yeah. for the section. You might want to keep that. You might want to keep hours of operation. Overall, very good. Great for bylaw. Findings are all okay down below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think those the general site plan, site plan approval stuff, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Well, there are a few things that um, I will look into and yeah. get back to you on. Yep, and I will contact the fire chief, I mean not the fire chief, the police chief on the one section we have. The, the biggest thing is just integrating uh, open grow as an option. Uh, and it may prove that it's too expensive an option by the time the Cannabis Control Commission is done with his it may be too expensive an option for anyone to do, but mm -hmm. at least it would be there as an option. We, the way we've got it written, I don't think it's, it seems to be economical. However, I know that the Control Commission has a whole other set of rules and regs. Yes, I know. And that yeah. the bill's point may be, we don't know. It might look like cash, but I think they have And your town meeting will be in October? Yes, yes, early October. Early October. So you'll need to get a notice and these regulations in place a month before that, probably, right? right? We, will, we, we need to, well, we need to hold a public hearing the Tuesday. Oh, right. We need to hold a public hearing the Tuesday before um, town meeting. I believe the town yeah, meeting that is Wednesday. I want to ask my cell phone on it. Town meeting is apparently going to be October 18th. Okay. So the third Tuesday of October is the 16th, so we could have our public hearing on the 16th, which means we need to have the bylaw by September, let's see, one, two, September 18th. Mm -hmm. is when we'd like to have the bylaw, which is uh, six weeks away. Right. Okay. And I don't think we're too far away from getting that one done. Right. Just have to you don't think the, the definition is going to be ready? I, I don't think the definition section is going to be ready right. uh, because this is pretty much all we're Yeah, we're well, that's true. We need, we need to get this one done because we don't have this. We could be in trouble. The definition section something we want to get that we could wait until the gym back in the spring pretty ready to go based on our last meeting I, I but just, still. I just I do a couple of things on the parking details right yes but we've got to get the marijuana we want because we have an we have a deadline on that one right there seems a little bit on the retail the number of retail establishments related to the uh, number of package stores and liquor licenses is there a number on the number is there a limit on the number of growers? It doesn't seem to have be addressed in here. Right. That's correct. We, there, there, I don't, I didn't, 
this gentleman may know, but I, from the brief review I did of this of the original draft, there was nothing on growers. It was all about the retail sales. The only limitation on the growers is the size of the fields. What is the size? I did. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand square feet. How much? Hundred thousand square feet. Two and a half acres. Basically, a little a little under. Which, I mean, allows a lot more people to reach out. From 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 a, from a tobacco field point of view, that's not a lot. From a marijuana field, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> a lot of work, trimming. There, there, two and a half acres of tobacco is plenty of work for most people. How far apart do you plant marijuana plants? Depends what you do. Some might, on an area like this, put 10 plants. They get about this high. Transplant. And, and no, and they send them into flower and they get one bite off each. Others get plants this big, California, and they do get 10 or 12 feet high. Mm. They won't get 10 or 12 feet high here. They might get six or eight feet high. Talk to Eddie Grolinski, ask him how he got 10 feet. That's an in-joke. That's an in-joke. <laughs> we won't go there. We won't go on that one. Okay. All right. Next meeting is the first Tuesday of September. First Tuesday of September, yes. Okay. And so you want to talk about whatever else has come would, up since then? We'll wrap this mm -hmm. up. We'd like to yep. wrap this one up. Yep. If we wrap this up, we can go into the definitions. Okay. Okay. First, that's September 4th. So, again, if you want, as you get anything completed, just feel free to send it along and mm -hmm. I'll kick it out. I think it's fine. People will comment back directly to you. We don't get into an open meeting issue. I can't. I can't collect comments from the board on your next draft and send them to you. Right. But if everybody will just contact you directly with any comments you have, the board can send them to you individually yeah. and be not in violation. Yeah. It's a fine line to walk. Right. Yes. I think some of it will just be, uh, you know, there's a typo here or there's an extra comma there. But, uh, and, and if there are any, if there are fundamental issues, uh, and we'll just have to hash them out at the next meeting. So do you prefer if I, I send it to the whole group or just to you and then you send it to the group? Either way. I mean, I... I just can't, you just can't collect. I just can't. I just can't right. collect. Yeah. I can't collect yeah. and send it back to you. Mm -hmm. I can send you my opinion. I can yes. send you one other person's opinion. <laughs> you can get, you can get five twenty five twenty percent opinions. Right. <laughs> okay, September fourth. That sounds good. As long as they haven't been drinking all the same. Yeah. Great. Thank all you right. very much. This has been a big help. All right. Great. Um, and then. Um, so would it be helpful if I sent you the, um, would it be helpful if I sent you guys the, the text we work from? Yes, I think so. so yeah. You're, 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 He's you're, done it. You're, you're correct. Yeah, well, if you want to send it Yeah, I will send you the text yeah. and the, as well as the East Hampton bylaw so you can take a look at that. Yeah. Um, I tried to uh, see if there's a Holyoke one. They, if there is, it is not online yet. So uh, East Hampton was the only one I could find that was online. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, I think, is just lagging. I Still think, working on it. I think Deerfield has something, but I couldn't find it on Deerfield there. Deerfield has an auditorium that will. Yeah. So Joe, do you understand why this woman was here and we were dealing with her tonight? I think I do. Okay. Well, she's she's been part of the Bay Planning Commission. We have an annual contract with them every year. We have for a number of years to help us on writing these bylaws and doing a lot of the footwork and research and details and whatever else 
and she's relatively new before this lady we had uh, a gentleman named Larry Smith he was with us for I don't see five or six years yes and he just recently retired and Susan has taken over from him so is this guidance from municipalities available online I believe it is from the Cannabis Control Commission I can send it to you all well if uh, <coughs> sure uh, yeah I can dig is it up it too one? No, it's a new one. Yeah, okay. Okay. So that is. Okay. Oh. Anyone else want to come? Yeah. yeah. Let me put my cell on in case you want. directly to me okay. and I forward everything I get okay. to the rest of the board without so you'd like me to send you the, it, you send it, if you if you could have this yeah. available and you could send it then yeah, because I think it gives the town some guidelines on what they can yeah. do and cannot do um, okay good yeah. idea okay. it helps us who are applying to you and we're both on the same page yeah. thank you thank you for coming tonight you were sure. a big help Okay, we've got an invoice to pay from the Gazette for 183.40 for the uh, legal notice that was Mr. Yes, thank you. Uh, easy one on, on uh, how much? 183.40. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Motion to pay. You guys are smart. <laughs> okay, motion to pay 183.40 to the Gazette. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. There a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And then we got a um, question from the building inspector on the drive station. The company putting up the electronic Tesla charges wants to put up a separate sign. And it's about let's see five foot by seven and a half foot so it's about um 35 a little over 35 square feet close to almost 40 and uh freestanding freestanding and it's kind of right at the end of where the, the electronic charges are but he's asking if we approve this on the site plan approval and bill and i both said no we don't remember approving a sign for te the tesla charges we remember talking a lot about electric chargers right but we never gave them approval to put up a separate sign which can that's where the charges already want to put it right there and that is this is what the sign will look like so i will reply back that we did not approve it they're at full signage that's correct they seem to have a lot more charging stations than we approved they wanted 11, 14, and we cut it down to five or six. Well, no, no, it was going to no. usurp some of their. No, we no, no, no. We no, no. cut it down six. from to five or six dedicated only park your Tesla here. Yeah, okay. And the other ones are anybody general charge can right. charge there. Right. So that they were they were had some dedicated and some that anybody could charge. That. I think I right. Chevy Volt couldn't hook up to I noticed it. Oh, really? Well, they couldn't hook up to Tesla's. Correct. But they could hook up theoretically mm -hmm. to they the could. There's supposed to be some generic ones and some Tesla ones. And that's yeah. why we didn't take the parking spaces away. Right. Because they were not restricted to Tesla. To be, to be determined, yeah. I noticed the other day they had four or five cars parked there. Given the illusion that they were being charged. Well. It's, it's general marketing. It's marketing. Well, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. When are they going to be opening? I don't know. There's, by the looks of it, they're 
close. Except for the electrical charging station, everything else is quite a ways away yet. I mean, they're, they've been working on those pumps now for weeks. I know. I know, they were digging up a big part of the parking lot and putting in some more trenches about two weeks ago. It looks like a state job where you put the thing in and then you go back and dig it up. But, okay. I have nothing else. I have nothing. I do. Okay. What about another letter going to the Board of Selectmen about where's the new facility for us to be housed at? And we appreciate an answer this time. And one other thing, are we going to get in trouble not doing minutes in this meeting? Oh, yeah. How are you doing with the new secretary? I've been straight out on other things. So, um, no, the short answer is no, we're not going to get in trouble. Well, according to public uh, records laws, there is. I will make a photocopy of these notes for anyone who asks for it. Well, you can get a hold, she said she would do it, and I think it too. So it would ease up your your work. You got the films, go over there and, and let her do that. Like, what's got uh, the Slotman secretary do for them? <clears throat> Move we adjourn. Second. Oh, wait a minute. Regarding John, do you want to make that a motion about the letter to the Slotman? Yeah. Make a motion that we. Send a letter asking about where the planning board's uh, plan room and their meeting room will be located in, in the near future. And this time, please respond. Do we have a second? Sir, what do you mean? It's dirt pop, it's dirt pop. We don't have a place to meet. We all go on vacation. We don't meet. We don't meet. Yeah. Motion passed for lack of a second. Okay. okay. Well, I'll withdraw my motion then. Okay. You made a motion to adjourn, so, right? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, John. You're welcome.